Hello fellow Dice fans and welcome to the Dice Channel. In this video I'll be unboxing roughly four months worth of Dice Mail. Please keep in mind that this was my first time shooting and editing a video for YouTube. I learned a lot making this video and look forward to creating more content for the Dice community. So let's get started. These are, uh, I got these off of eBay and they were listed as Armory Magic the Gathering dice. Let's uh, pop one out here, have a look at it. Yeah, there we go. It's pretty cool. They got the little elemental symbols on them. Yeah, neat. I like those. What do we got here? An espresso box. An espresso ice cube tray. <laughs> Oh, what do we got here? Oh, here we go. Yeah, I, I remember getting these. I just just ordered them, I think. The uh, Emory D30s that were just up on eBay. All right, what do we got here? I just recently ordered this one, too. This was a, a lot of vintage Bakelite pieces that had some Bakelite dice in them, poker dice. I really dig poker dice. I like the way they look. I like the way the Bakelite ones smell. A little bit of Melderhide in the morning. All right, what's next? Making a mess quick here. Oh, all right, another armory. But I'm actually really excited about this one because this, if I can get it out of this immaculate wrapping, is my very first first generation armory die. And I'm very stoked to add that to my collection. Very cool. Very happy about that one. All right, let's keep it rolling. Here's a little package from uh, one of my good dice buddies. Caitlin, I won't say her last name for privacy. So I, I, I don't think she'd care, but out of respect. Ooh. Okay, here. This. I'll, I'll have to do some some looking in on it and and some a little bit more research, but I'm pretty sure this is a white granite 50d6 that uh, uh they they were slated to be uh, a new color uh, along with a few other new colors like uh, uh, Cthulhu or or Green Ninja. And, uh, you know, a couple others that just never went into full production. So the only place to really get these uh, was in the Pounder Dice bags back when they were planning on making them. So uh, I'm, I'm really stoked about this one. I'm going to dive in depth on it and try and verify that that's what this is and, and not just a, a POD random. So uh, thank you, Caitlin. This is also from my friend Caitlin. So let's see what she's got in here. So, we've got some uh, POD exclusive dice here that I don't already have. And a couple of, couple of POD randoms here. We've got the, uh, I think that's called Popcorn. POD set. And we got some, well, we got a loose, I think that's Icebreaker is, is what people have called it or named it. And we just got a few neat randoms here. And uh, looks like she threw in a blue stars. Thank you. All right. Oh. Oh, yeah. Looks like we got a. Pretty sure that's an armory. It's got the 2013 2 4 pip layout. Very nice. I'm, I'm very, very fond of the, the old clear sharp edge dice. Oh, come on, come back and focus. 
There we go. All right, I'm not sure what this one is. Oh, all right. Yeah, I picked these up on eBay. And I was actually pretty shocked when I saw these on there because uh, these, these, they're not super easy to come across. I mean, they're not impossible to find. But uh, Chessex in their, their pound of dice bags, <clears throat> uh, at one point anyway, I think, I want to say like late 90s, early 2000s maybe, uh, they started making these guys that are half opaque and half speckled. And they came in the pound of dice bags. And they're just really cool. And I, I saw this color. And I, I don't have this color combination yet. And I have a good probably a dozen or so different variations of this. So, uh, yeah, I'm pretty stoked to add not one, but four of them. So, uh, I'll keep one and put the other ones in my trade stock. Moon mares. Oh, all right. I think I know what this is. Yes. These are my Turum dice. Uh, I backed these guys on a Kickstarter. Uh because I saw they were coming out with these really cool wizard tower dice. And uh, these guys are are dice, but they're, they're unconventional polyhedral dice that stack to form a wizard tower. And I'm pretty stoked about these. It's getting close here. So... These pieces here, you can stack up and it's supposed to make a tower. Let's see if I can figure this out real quick. Okay, I'll have to play with those another time. <laughs> not exactly sure what this is. It's not dice, it doesn't feel like dice. Must be dice, a dice adjacent. So we've gone in this pile. These are old Dragon Dice mats. If you're familiar with the Dragon Dice game, these are the old mats that they used to sell players. They're just canvas, but uh, I like them a lot. They're cool. Uh, copyright 1995, TSR. Very cool. I'll go up with my, uh, my other old D&D stuff. Dragon Dice. It, it took me a while to really get turned on to Dragon Dice once I started collecting, but well, once I like started looking into the history of them and everything, uh, it's it's a really cool story, uh, which I, I totally plan on doing a video on sometime in the future. So uh, we will keep rolling along here. <clears throat> we'll go to these open boxes now. <clears throat> All right. Now this is stuff that, you know, I, I got it as dice mail, but I, you know, I'd opened it, but then I decided, you know, I'm going to start this dice channel and, you know, I kind of want to save this stuff for my unboxing video. So this stuff hasn't been categorized or integrated into my collection yet. This I'm pretty stoked about. <clears throat> I don't believe I have any heritage dice yet. Uh, I don't think they actually made their dice. I think they just resold like uh, old game science or armory maybe, uh, I'm not 100% sure on that, but I'm, I'm pretty sure on it. Uh, <clears throat> but these are my my first Heritage dice. And uh, if you notice the Pip D6, and you're not sure what that's about, well, these dice were made uh, back before polyhedrals were really in demand. So uh, to save, like, material and cost, instead of having the D6s made, they would just buy them from other manufacturers, you know, because they're... There have been board games for a while. People have been using just Pip D6s for who knows how long. So they just threw those in the package and called it good. Very neat. I like it. We got a Chessex sample pack, which I have a big soft spot for. I've got some up there. I have a, a Borealis sample pack. Old glitter, of course. Uh, up in my case. I'll show you guys sometime. Uh, but this set, uh, this is... Available 2006 Gemini dice. And that's going to go really nice with the rest of my, my chest six shelf. We got some uh, 
It's a little pack of this game science dice that I just bought because I liked them. And I need more game science dice in my collection. I mean, who doesn't? These were sent to me by another good dice friend, Orion. And uh, this this has some really cool pieces in it. And uh, I've gotten some really cool stuff from this guy. And he's just a really good guy. But uh got some of these. I'm not sure how well those are showing up. This was a, uh, I want to say like a prototype color that Chessex was considering <clears throat> uh, called Christmas. But it just, it never went into full production. And there were only three pieces available. The uh, D20, the D6, and the D10. And you could only get those. It's the same as the uh, the other halvesies I was showing you earlier. You could only get those out of the Pounder Dice bags. Because they never went into full production. Instead of just throwing them away. You know, throw them in the bag. And uh, another situation like that with two more of these pieces. This color was going to be called uh, Jambalaya. And it never went into production. They only made the D20 and the D6 of it. And uh, these... Stuff like that can be kind of hard to track down. I mean, it, it's out there. But, uh, you, you know, you really... Pieces like that, you generally got to get into the dice collecting community and, and get to know people and, uh, you know, find people that have it to, that are willing to trade it or sell it. And uh got some other cool you know just pod random stuff in here i won't take up too much time on it but uh there's another one of those halvesies like the the green ones i got very cool what else we got in here all right got some very old poker dice and uh you can tell just by the patina on these things that they've, they've been through some stuff which just makes them look that much cooler, I think. Now, uh, as far as the material goes, these are... Uh, uh, I'll have to try and get some, some good close-up pictures of these. But uh, they have the layers in them uh, that tells me that these are a type of a celluloid plastic called French ivory. And, uh, you know, they, they made it as a substitute for real ivory. And you can identify it because it has the, the layers in it. I'm not sure if you can see that on this camera. But uh, eventually I'll uh, I'll do a, a video going over, like, materials and, and plastics. And, uh, you know, stuff that v vintage dice are generally made out of. You know, I'll, I'll cover how to identify some of those, uh, the different materials and and we'll talk about antique dice on, on a video at some point and go over that. Oh, now these, I got these pretty cheap on eBay, which makes me wonder about them. And just looking at them now, they're flawless. I mean, these look like they came right out of the mold. And that, that's what I'm worried about. These, these are supposed to be armory, old armory that are all color uh what's what's the uh crossover dice i think is how they refer to them or crossover colors well, when they're, they're making dice of one color in the machine and then they switch to another color but they don't clean it out you know they just run dice through until it comes through the the new color and you end up with swirly opaque dice like this and from what I've heard, those are pretty rare. So the fact that I got, you know, six of these in a lot for a decent price and they're all absolutely flawless. I don't know. I'll, I'll do some digging to try and verify that these are what I hope they are. But if not, they're pretty anyway. Last thing in this box. Oh, these are some more old poker dice. And I believe these are Bakelite. Quick trick with Bakelite is just heat it up, rub your thumb on it for friction. Yeah, yeah, these are Bakelite. 
you, once you heat it up, you can smell, you can actually smell the formaldehyde that they use to, to make these. And it's the same deal with Catalan. Catalan is another type of old plastic. And we'll, and we'll go over that stuff in another video. This box has a bunch of Coplow, Coplow, Coplove, Coplo. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's a, I'm pretty sure it's a Russian name, and if it is, it'd be Koplov, I believe, but I just call them Koplo, or Koplow, Koplow is fun. Uh, yeah, these are cool. Uh, got directional dice, and all these packs right here, uh, these are all like buildable dice. Uh, you have like a base, and then you have different interchangeable faces you can put on it. And we have one here for directions, uh, body parts, weapons. And then we just got a couple bags of uh, blue and red blank faces. And uh, pretty stoked to add those to my other uh, Coplow dice. Oh, uh, these are game science. I, I don't know if these are... I do. It says right on the back, manufactured by game science. Uh, they, they weren't designed by game science, though, I don't believe. I think these were just designed by a guy and he, he sold the idea to Luzaki or, or something like that. I don't know. But uh, I just, I thought they were cool. They're chess dice. Uh, chess, chessizer. I thought they were neat. And they'd look good with my other game science. So I got them. What do you got here? Oh, this was a small lot that I bought for one guy. Which, if you're a collector like me, you've probably done that a few times. I got this lot of uh, you know vintage dice specifically for this guy. Now this is, by the looks of it, a legitimate uh, color crossover or changeover die. You can see the, the different color swirls in there. And these, I, I really like them. I just think they're really cool. Uh, especially like when they get cool designs like that. I, yeah, I, I could look at this all night. <laughs> Got some more, some game science sets in here that I picked out, which are, are pretty cool. I just like grabbing a hold of, you know, game science that I don't have. Just any dice that I don't have, really. I'll grab a hold of them. Oh, now speaking of game science, these are my favorite things from game science. The Zaki Hedron. They're a 100-sided die. The reason I like these so much is because they're there's a lot of collectability to them because they're the, the Zaki Hedron has gone through you know so many different phases. You, you you have large number Zaki Hedrons, small number Zaki Hedrons. You have patent pending ones. You have post patent, and uh, this is a small number patent pending. And uh, I I will I'll probably do a video just on Zaki Hedrons because that's how cool I think they are. But we got this one now, and we'll be putting her with the others. Oh. Unfortunately, it's been ripped off the cardboard, and I didn't get the cardboard. But this is a set of old polyhedral dragon dice that you could get out of Dragon Magazine back in, like, the 80s. That's, that's my first unopened set of these with the crayons, so I'm pretty stoked to add these. Uh, eventually, I'll, I'll pick up one with the cardboard back, but those that, that adds a bit of price on it. And I, I picked those up because, you know, why not? They were affordable, and I got them. We'll come back to those. Because I just saw... The person who sold me this Zaki Hedron also threw in this old ad, uh, game science advertising with it. And this stuff, I just, I, I think is so cool. I really like old gaming advertising, dice advertising. And this, I, this, this sheet of paper was probably printed up sometime in the uh, mid eighties, maybe it's, it's pretty old. Uh, I, I like stuff like this. I'll end up framing this and, and putting it up by my other game science. 
Uh, and same with this. It's another cool little game science pamphlet. Uh, this one says 1989 on it. So uh, very, very cool. I, I really dig this stuff. You know, the, the old school gaming stuff. It, it really gets me excited. I'm looking forward to our D&D game tomorrow. And uh, last but not least out of this box are uh, two dragon dice promo dice. I believe those were convention only. And, uh, yeah. What else we got here? I think I know what this is. <laughs> Box. In a package. That's some wackage. Alright. Yes. Pound of dice. Nice. I love going through a pound of dice. I've gone through uh, maybe 16 or 17. Uh, I have all the labels for them. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll edit in and show you. But uh, yeah, I think it's got some cool pieces in it. Can't wait to go through it. All right. I think we got another one of those right here. Yes, indeed. I always tell my friends and family, if you ever just don't know what to get me for my birthday or Christmas, give me a pound of dice. I will smile and be happy on my birthday. Okay. All right. Let's see what this is. Another beautiful old Zaki Hedron. This is a got a light like violet color, patent pending, large number. Very cool. All right, and it looks like we got the same advertising that it came with the other one. Very cool. I can dig it. All right. Now these I'm really stoked about. So these are, are some more, some more Chessex dice that you could only get in pound of dice bags. And these are pretty hard to find. Uh, I've been, I've been really digging on Chessex for about two years and I found one of these so far and I just got three more from a very cool guy that I met in a very cool dice group. These are they're the same style, the half and half as uh, these other ones I showed you. But these actually have the patent pending mark on them, on the one face. We got that on all three of these. And I am very excited to add these. <clears throat> Uh, these dice, these Chessex patent pending half and half D6s, these are only the second dice that I've ever come across that have uh, the Chessex name on the actual die. I've only seen that in these and the old Chessex poker dice, which uh, I only have one of. Uh, I will begin actively searching down more of those in the near future. Uh, those are incredibly hard to find. Uh, all right, so very cool, very cool little addition here to my Chessex shelf. I'm very excited about those ones. Let's keep it rolling. All right, uh, we'll save these last three bi big boxes real quick and uh, I'll show you guys my antique store find from the other day. I just got a couple things in here. I got this really cool tin with the jousters on it. got this paperweight that has the three little dice in it I thought that was neat I like the shape of it too it has like a polyhedral vibe to it very cool 
And uh, I also picked these guys up. Uh, these are old advertising like business cards that have dice in them. And they're like they're like combination uh paperweight business card and mirror. So if you, you see a customer drive up and you can check your check your mouth, make sure you got no food hanging out and uh, yeah, say hey, here's my my business card. I thought these were really neat cuz they got the dice in them, you know. Got to get them. And uh last thing out of here is this little box of uh vintage dice that I picked up. And uh, you can tell pretty easily by looking just at the, the patina on these, that those are Bakelite. You rub them and smell them too to verify that, uh, which I already have before I bought them. Uh, same deal with these these clear guys, these clear red ones. Those are Catalan, which is another type of older plastic that was made with formaldehyde. So it's pretty easy to identify. All right. I saw a guy in one of the, the dice groups on Facebook post these. He makes them, and I thought these were just way too cool to pass up. So I had to have him make me some to display some dice in. And uh, before I post this video, I'll reach out to him and, and ask him if he wants me to link any contact info. If anybody else is interested in getting some off of him. But uh, what these are, they are pretty much big, big cups or big vases with dice etched onto them. That is going to look spectacular, ravishing, full of dice. No? I believe so. So we got the one, and we got another one. Very nice job on the packaging too, bud. So we got the one with the D20s. We got the one with the D6s. Very cool. I'm, I'm really stoked to, to fill these up with some dice and get them displayed. Second to last box. This is a Chessex package. We got the Chessex. All right, what do we got here? All right. Got a bag of 60 polyhedral dice. Discontinued loose dice sale. This is a bag of, looks like pretty recently out of print stuff. Oh, yeah, got a dandelion D20 in there. Some slime pieces. Some Gemini orange or blue. We'll go through this in another video, maybe. I don't know. That's enough to make a video out of. I'm stoked to get them. Got some off-colored assorted dice. Another another pack of off-colored dice. Packing. Oh, yes. Promotional pint glasses. And I'm pretty sure I just ordered two of the same glass. You know. I have another one already on display up there, which you all will see eventually. That is too cool. Chessex, the decade of rolling 20s. I love it. That is very cool. And this is the same thing, version 2. I got version one up there. And I will pick up all of those that they put out because I love displaying dice and glasses. All right. Last box. Let's see what we got here. Absolutely beautiful. The latest wave of lab dice in test tubes. Very cool. I am digging this. And we got all the colors from the last run. Right here. Ooh. Oh, those. Those look really cool. I like it. I like them. 
Love me some chess sticks. Yeah. I I went ahead and got the uh the display. There we go. It's got a spot for uh all the lab dice that are going to be released in the test tubes. So I'm, I'm very stoked to uh get this set up and add it to my my displays. So uh yeah. Thanks for watching another episode of the Dice Channel. If you're enjoying our content, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, where I post lots of dice photos. Don't forget to check out the video description for links, credits, and information on how you can help support the Dice Channel. If you're a dice manufacturer or artisan dice maker and you'd like to have your dice showcased on an episode, contact me on any of our social platforms. Until next time, happy rolling.